Hello my friends, continuing the water cooling saga, today we speak about pumps, reservoirs and liquid for your loop. Now, what is a pump? A pump is basically an electric motor that rotates an impeller that will create pressure, and this pressure is what moves the liquid around the loop. They are enclosed inside of a case that will give you an inlet and an outlet port. The most commonly used pumps on the market are the Lane D5 and the DDC that is also made from Lane. And even if you see lots of different brands naming on them, they are mostly rebrands from the original lane design. They are both a wet rotor design. What this means is that the liquid inside of them is what lubricates the moving parts of it. That is why you never try to run your pump while it's dry because you could damage it really, really fast. You have mostly two different stats when it comes to the pump to measure the efficiency of the cell. The first one is the water flow. And this is how much liquid can a pump move without any restrictions and the second one is head pressure this will measure how high or hard can a pump push liquid having lots of restriction and you want to look for something that there is a balance between both of them now let's speak about the most popular one that is the d5 what i have right here you have two variations of it one that runs at the maximal rpm and you also have the pwm or vario model on which you can control the speed of it by a free PWM port on your motherboard or it will have a small knob mostly underneath the pump to control the speed of it. The D5 is bigger, runs cooler and it's also more quiet than the DDC. It's rated at a maximum flow rate of 1500 liters per hour and a head pressure of 4 meters. This is how high can the pump push the water vertically and fighting against gravity. The liquid that is inside, as I said before, works as a lubricant, but in this case also works as the coolant for the pump itself. But you guys don't really need to worry, uh, the heat output of the pump is not going to be noticeable on your component. On the other hand, the DDC runs a lot hotter and it will normally have a heat sink of metal underneath it. It has less water flow coming at 1000 liters per hour but it has more head pressure coming at 7 meters. It's also smaller than the D5, but it's really recommended and best for smaller cases and high restrictive loops. But they are also considerably louder than the D5. Now, with the pump itself, you can do nothing without a top housing. And here is where you start to see all the different brands. Like, for example, EK Waterblocks, Beats Power, Alpha Cool, and many, many more. They create the top for their pumps, so basically all the pumps come from the same lane design and mostly what is going to change is the top that is created by these third-party sellers. On to reservoirs, you are going to see lots of different designs. One of the most widely used ones is this like I have here that is a reservoir and pump combo. Like this is really more easy to install, but you can also for example use the same type of tubing reservoir but with the pump separated to it. But depending on the case that you have and the design that you want to do into your loop, it could be also a great option. There are also a couple of different designs and different shapes. For example, you have the five and a quarter inches case bay that they are less and less uses right now, but they also fit where normally you will have your DVD players or your CD players if you still have them. And the last one that every day is more and more used is the distribution plates. These are plates. They are specifically designed for your case, but you can also find some universal ones. But they will work as a reservoir, but they also have more ports on them, so you can have more clean runs and clean lines in your system. It doesn't really matter what type of reservoir you choose, as long as you follow the principle that the reservoir should be above your pump, like this, is the best and more easiest way to fill your loop. And you can also be 100% sure that your pump is never going to run dry. Going to the liquid, the most known to be used is the still water, 
that you can mix with pH Nuke or even with a silver coil. So you don't have any growth inside of your system that can clog all the blocks inside of your loop. But you also can find things like this. This is a premix from EK. I love these things, it works great. You don't have to add anything. You can find the same thing as a concentrated, but you have to mix it with distilled water. This is the clear version, and you also have a lot of different colors, but if you choose to, you can also make the color yourself. Please don't be using food grade colorant because it's going to introduce bacteria and everything else into your loop that you don't want to have. So search for the specific ones for water cooling loops. And you also have some difference like the pastel colored ones. I have had that in the past. They look beautiful, but they have the problem that they are going to leave some residue in your blocks and it's going to be a pain to clean them after. But for the most of us, I will not recommend it if I tell you guys the truth. I have a lot of bad experience with it in the past. That is pretty much it for this video. On the next one, I'm going to show you how to install a GPU block. Press the like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you are new to the channel, a subscriber is free. And this will help the channel out to bring you more content like this one. Thanks for watching, my friends. And like always, see you on the next time. Bye bye.